Good morning. Today is Friday, August 14th, 2020. I think for once I can agree with President Trump's use of the word huge. The deal brokered between United Arab Emirates and Israel that was announced yesterday morning is a huge breakthrough. In the words of Thomas Friedman, it is a geopolitical earthquake. And it does many things on many levels for many different constituencies. For example, at least for the time being, it maintains the possibility, the possibility of a two-state solution. So for those for whom that is an important avenue, that at least remains alive for now. It also removes the subject of annexation from the national discourse, again, for the time being. It remains to be seen for how long. Keep in mind that that subject of annexation was not only highly disputed within Israel and among countries, but within the Jewish community. That was a very highly contentious issue. And removing that issue from the table for now uh, removes a very serious source of uh, argument that we are able to avoid for the time being. Friedman has a deeper point, which I think is very crucial. He writes, there are really two coalitions in the region today. Those who want to let the future bury the past and those who want to let, want to let the past keep burying the future. It's really insightful. Are we going to move forward with some new reality or will we be stuck with the ancient tribalism and animosities that have always existed. He writes, the UAE and Israel and the US on Thursday showed, at least for one bright shining moment, that the past does not always have to bury the future, that the haters and dividers don't always have to win. It was a breath of fresh air. I like the comment made by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. His words were, Blessed are the peacemakers, Mabruk and Mazel Tov. And I think that praise is due to all three of these leaders and to those under them who worked so hard to achieve this. But I feel that some are not getting the credit they deserve. And there is one person in particular who may have been crucial to this entire negotiation. And so far I have seen no mention of this person's name. And so let me lay out for you the following facts. The first official word of this deal came from President Trump yesterday morning, Thursday morning, at 10.50 a.m. our time. 10.50 a.m., that was Trump's tweet. Huge breakthrough today, historic peace agreement between our two great friends, Israel and the United Arab Emirates. No further details at this moment. Okay, now keep this in mind. That's 10.50 a.m., first official word. There was a hint that something was happening a little earlier at 9.40 a.m. our time, Eastern Daylight Time, because at 9.40 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which in Israel is the afternoon, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has abruptly left a meeting of the coronavirus cabinet 
On his way out the door, Netanyahu says cryptically, you will find out afterward and alludes to a matter of national concern. Okay, so now we know what the matter of national concern was. He needed to conclude this deal because it was announced just an hour later. So the earliest indication of anything, the hint is 9.40 a.m. I want to ask you a question. What happened 10 minutes before that that caused Prime Minister Netanyahu to leave the cabinet meeting and that put in motion the announcement of the agreement one hour later. What happened yesterday morning at 9.30 a.m.? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Yesterday morning at 9.30 a.m., I uploaded my video of yesterday's 10 at 9 where I spoke about, specifically, fresh air and going to the beach and children laughing and trying to capture the dream of peace. So I upload that video at 9.30 a.m. Ten minutes later, Netanyahu is called out of the cabinet meeting and an hour later it's announced. Is it a coincidence? No, I do not think it's a coincidence. And uh, I think that I deserve a measure of credit for this huge deal. And you're welcome. I just want to share with you just a very short story, not connected to this at all. <clears throat> so... Maybe for you, for me, it's been a long week, a difficult week. You know, achieving peace in the Mideast is not easy. You know, it takes a lot out of you. It's been a long week and it's Friday morning and, uh, but Shabbos is coming. And it's always important to remind ourselves what Shabbos is supposed to do for us. And I've discussed this with, with you before in, on many occasions both what Shabbos is supposed to do for God, what it gives to God, so to speak, and also the effect that it should have on us. And at the end of a week that's been particularly um, full and challenging, so I'm sure you, I certainly look forward to Shabbos. And, and, and we need to just remind ourselves, what can Shabbos provide for us? What can Shabbos do for us? if we allow it, if we observe it properly and take from it what it is supposed to give to us. So let me repeat to you a story. I've told this story in the, in the past, but it's a story told by the Dubna Magid, one of the great 18th century sages who is known for the stories that he told. <clears throat> and he tells this parable that captures the essence of the magic of Shabbos. He says there was a poor man who was traveling on the road and he was carrying a very heavy burden on his shoulder. And he's battling to push on. It's heavy. He's tired. And along comes a very wealthy man in a very fancy large carriage and the wealthy man stops by the side of the road and says, my friend, would you like to come have a ride? Take the, take the weight off your feet. It's easy. It's comfortable. Come into, the, come into the carriage and enjoy a ride. So the man is very grateful. The poor man is very grateful. He climbs into the carriage and he is so grateful because he can sit down and he gets in and the carriage is moving and a little while later the man, the owner of the carriage, looks behind him and he sees that his guest that he picked up, he's still holding the burden on his shoulder. So he says to him, my friend, you're in a carriage 
It's easy. Why don't you just put it down on the ground? Just put it on the floor. You don't have to hold it. Why don't you put it down? And the poor man says, I'll tell you why. Because I feel bad as it is. You did such a kindness for me. You give me a lift. I've added weight to your carriage. Your horse has to carry more weight because I am in it. The least that I can do, I can carry my own bag. That's what Shabbos is. We carry around bags all week. They are physical bags. They are emotional bags. They are spiritual bags. And Shabbos is the time to come to rest. But very often, even if we sit down to rest, and I mean that both literally and figuratively, we're still carrying that bag on our shoulder. But God says to us, that's what Shabbos is for. Shabbos is not only an opportunity for you to sit down, to rest, literally and figuratively. It is also a time for you to put your burden down. Of course, there are emergency situations where a person has to deal with a burden on Shabbos, yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the everyday stuff that goes on, that, that consumes our week, that maybe keeps us up at night. When Shabbos comes, we have not only the opportunity to rest, we have the opportunity to put our burden down. When Shabbos starts, we should try to feel that we are lightened because those burdens have been placed down. That should be the way we enjoy and appreciate Shabbos. And I hope that is the way that you will experience Shabbos this Shabbos and every week. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and a fantastic Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.